Hi, my name is Jared Broad, and in this screencast, we're going over the iconic sell in May and go away trading strategy. First, we're going to look into the theory of how the strategy might work, and then we're going to review the importance of benchmarking. Then we're going to code up the strategy, and it should be a quick one today. And then finally, we'll do a sanity check and compare our results with the benchmark. So let's dig into it. This strategy is based on the theory that there's increased consumer spending from the period of October to May because it includes Halloween and Christmas. This increased spending drives up company earnings and results in better stock prices. It could also be that because everybody is selling in May, it drives the prices down. A large number of analysts have proven and disproven this theory over the years, but let's just look into it for academic interest. Before we jump into coding, it's important to review how we're going to measure our algorithm success. This is typically done by benchmarking. Benchmarking is a way of comparing your algorithm to some predetermined independent metric. This is commonly the indexes, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the Russell, but you can set your benchmark to be whatever you'd like. For our case, we're buying and selling the S&P 500 with our sell in May strategy. So it makes sense that we should compare our strategy to the S&P 500. I'm sure there's a thousand different ways we can implement this strategy, but just to keep it short and sweet, we're going to use the time property of the Quant Connect algorithm. This is a public property and it's a date time object. So we can just access the property and then say to string to get the month that the algorithm's running in. And if the month is May, then we set the algorithm to flat. And then if the month is November, then we can set the algorithm to long. Now this is just pseudo code and we'll actually do the coding next. So just to get started, we're going to code this up from the basic template. So we're just going to call it the QCU cell in May. Then we need to initialize the algorithm. So we want to backtest this over an extended period. So we'll go back to the very start of Quant data, which is January 1st, 1998. This set end date is taking it all the way through until yesterday. So Quant Connect automatically updates its data sources to yesterday so you can constantly backtest up to the very latest in data. And then we'll do it with $25,000 and we want to backtest on the S&P 500. So the SPY is the S&P 500 ETF. Uh, we'll use minute resolution data because we don't really need any higher resolution than that. And Finally, we're going to use series data because we want to run one long consecutive investment. So now we're into the on trade bar event handler and we can determine here when we want to buy and when we want to sell. So the time variable here is actually a property of QC algorithm. So it's, it's in this underlying function. Uh, Time.toString will generate uh, in this case, a three character representation of the month. So we could say if time is equal to May, then we want to go flat. Else, if time to string is equal to November, that's when we want to go flat. Okay, so there's the, the foundation, the framework. So from here, we need to check if we already have stock. And if we already have stock, then we need to sell that stock. And here, we want to check if we don't have stock, then we want to buy stock in November. And we can just use the exclamation mark there, say that we don't have stock. And so if we do have stock in May, then we want to sell it. So we can just put in an order and the order is for the SPY and we have our portfolio here and it's a portfolio of SPY and the quantity that's in that portfolio. So we're ordering the inverse of what we're holding. So in this case, it will empty out the portfolio and then the debug message here is just for us to read it and to confirm that it's worked. So debug sends messages to the console and they'll stream in here and it's also recorded in the algorithm logs. So every time there's an order, it will 
notify us, it'll tell us that it went flat, uh, the year that it went flat, and the quantity that we just sold. Similarly, in November, we want to go long. Because we've been buying and selling stock before, we don't know our exact cash, we don't know how much we have, so we need to order the quantity based on how much cash we have. Because we're going to be benchmarked, assuming we were 100% long for the entire investment, we need to really maximize the use of our cash. So here we have a quantity and we're taking our cash and dividing it by the price of our asset to get the exact the maximum quantity that we can purchase with our funds. So here we can place the order for SPY and then for this new dynamic quantity. And in the same way before, we can send the debug message when we place that order. So in this case, we're selling the QCU sell in May. We go long in the year 1998, 99, and for the quantity that we went long. So our hope really here is that we maximize our the use of our cash. So we haven't actually defined this quantity variable, so let's just define that here. And then actually to, to keep our code tidy, it's probably better to define a symbol string here. So that way we can play with different assets. Okay, and now anywhere where we use SPY, we can just replace this with symbol. So now just to review, the, the minute bar is SPY events, the data is passed in here, we check whether it's May, if it's May and we hold stock, then we sell everything we have and we're sending a debug message. And then again, if it's November and we don't have any stock, then we need to maximize our portfolio holdings of that asset and then send a debug message. And that's about all we need to do really to, to handle the sell and May strategy. So just to give our algorithm a little bit more working cash, we can actually define the leverage with the add security method. This function can be overloaded, so we can actually define here uh, true, and this true is fill forward, whether we want the data to fill up the gaps, and then the leverage multiplier, which we'll just define as four, which is a standard um, reg G leverage, and then false, which is the extended market hours flag. So do we want our algorithm to use data from outside of normal market trading hours? But the key thing that we just wanted to set here was this four, and you can actually configure that to be any leverage that you want for your strategy. Now we won't be using the leverage, the algorithm just sets the quantity based on the cash that we have, but just to be safe and to give us a little bit of buffer room. So then we can build that and run a back test, and let's see how it goes. And it started. So our first order was sent there. It went long in November uh, 1998 with 300 uh, count. And then it went flat by May 1999 with the same quantity. So it's running perfectly. And we just need to let that run and uh, come back to it in a minute. So just fast forwarding a little bit, here's the end result with the S&P 500 benchmark shown in light gray in the background. You can see the May to November periods, it's going flat because it's emptying out all its holdings. And then the, the other periods from November to May over Christmas and Halloween, we're getting our performance here. And uh, down in the trades, you'll notice that the quantities are varying each year because it's actually taking any profits that are made and then reinvesting those to buy more shares, which is something that the benchmark can't do. Now I'm sure that other uh, analysts will get different results, but uh, if you check here, it's virtually identical. Uh, the, the volatility is lower, which is a good thing, but the final return of both benchmarks is almost, almost identical within a few dollars, which is pretty phenomenal. The QuantConnect model includes the trade fees and slippage, and then, you know, it's just a complete fluke. In this particular back test, you might actually prefer to use the sell and may strategy versus the benchmark simply because the volatility is much lower and that lower volatility and less time in the market means you got, in this case, you got the same return 
with lower volatility and less time exposed to the market. Um, but I'm sure other people will, will have different opinions on that. Thanks very much. That's the Salome strategy back tested in Quant Connect and then benchmarked with the S&P 500. There's a lot more work you could do, but if you'd like to dig deeper, I'd recommend perhaps trying this with more retail stocks. Our initial theory was that the November to May period had increased consumer spending, which resulted in better earnings for the companies. Potentially, if we filter down to the retail stocks, we could see a much more pronounced effect from this period, which could be an interesting thing for you to try and then share the results to the community. Cheers.